The Football Pod on Off The Ball in partnership with AIB. Proud sponsors of the Football Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships. Hashtag the toughest. Hello there and you're very welcome back to the Football Pod. It's episode two of the third season and we're back in our Monday Corners, lads. James O'Donoghue, you're in your mammy's house. All right, I am indeed. That's where you record the pod. I, I should turn your on. I have the fire on there. Oh. oh. I have, just when you start talking, I have Sky Sports News on so I can drift off there and watch that. <laughs> well, <laughs> probably starts talking um, about it. Yeah. But Paddy has the golf ball. When he was on it with O'Rourke, quarter. I'll just drift off. But uh, I have a lovely and, and setup here. And what's to your left, your immediate left? A light? I thought your mom had the trophy cabinet there. <laughs> that is right. There's no trophy cabinet. The, this I, is the, the China. He's in the recording studio. Okay, I thought it was the other side though. What's the other side? No, that's a wall. Go on, show us it though. <laughs> for a YouTube, on. turn uh, the camera. Go on. It doesn't go that way. All right. It's like for one Annie, of these, I'm it's sure there's been a couple of eagle-eyed, eagle-eyed viewers on YouTube over the last couple of years who have spotted that trophy cabinet in the corner. I've definitely seen it. Paddy Andrews. Bonjour. New Year, new you. Is it? Any New Year's resolutions? We're a January? couple of weeks in. Are we, do, are we doing dry January, lads? I tried to do it. I failed. Miserable. How long? I, I was at a thirty last Friday. week. First Friday night. <laughs> hey, go on. Did you get further than that shambles? Uh, I don't think I've had a drink yet, but I was at a thirty the other night. A good friend of mine and I was driving home from Galway, and I had a couple of zero zeros. Totally fine. So I, had, I don't think I've drank yet, but it's not it's not out of any great reason to do dry January. You know. Uh, I'm sticking it myself. What are that? you doing, dry January? Yeah, again, it's too, uh, it's, it's really too on in depressing a month. It's too depressing a month to be at that stuff. Oh, I'm having an all right January. Back in yeah. college now, busy with work. Last final semester of college, so I've been kept busy. But no, doing a bit of training. Are you still doing your five a.m. bike row skis? No, but that's very difficult. It's six a.m., but it's very difficult in these conditions. Mm. That's more of a spring summer. I'm doing the evening classes now. Like you say, can't. the morning sessions you do right. You're yeah. better off. Are you better off doing a gym session for your day or like if you knock yourself out with a bike or a ski like you don't have a thing left for the rest of the day do you? No I, I, the opposite I prefer doing something like that because that's harder Really? Uh, and I swear to God it goes by so quick you're asleep when you're doing it you wake up at a quarter to six you get into the car you arrive at six o'clock and literally you only wake up at about seven and you're finished and you mm. go to work and then you can go and just be a slug in the gym doing weights in the evening like yeah. I'd be the opposite okay. now I'd if I went through low intensity in the gym in the morning, I'd literally fall asleep on the bench. Jam True, it. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd struggle now with the morning. It's like early morning in this weather. I was watching, I don't know, January's a month when you're retired. And now, Jimmy, you're a shorter retired than I am. I look out and you see some of the games, some of the clips on Twitter, the Burn Cup, the McKenna Cup. We see it in the National League over the next couple of weeks. It's horrendous out there. Like gale sheets of wind, lashing rain, terrible pitches. It's about minus two, minus three degrees. Like, no. Yeah, do you have a New Year's resolution, James? I kind of have everything nailed down already. Not get sent off. <laughs> Once you get the man who's got everything like not, yeah. not get sent off. Yeah, all right. I'll yeah. I'll take that. But in fairness, I was ranked. I like <laughs> oh, we, we, we know that you you have they've if been out it to get was, you. If it was a final and I had the microphone, I would have called hey. out the referee for each one of my red cards. If, if Legion get you, they have. If Legion get the job done this year, by God, we will be there to see you with the microphone in hand. Even if you're not the captain, we'll make sure you get a microphone in your hand on the set. So <laughs> Just get well Paddy Clifford to write your speech. Yeah. So uh, last week, lads, that. on episode one, we got stuck into Division One and Division Four. This week, we're going to have a look at Division Two and Division Three. We're only a couple of days away from the. The league's kicking off. It is, as we mentioned last week, such an important league campaign. It's always one of the best competitions in the game. But this year's league is going to be so, so important because it's going to have a direct impact on the All-Ireland series. And that is going to come into play once the championships kick off. Because once the provincials are over, there are going to be, in the All-Ireland series, four groups of four. And likewise, in the Talchon Cup, four groups of four. So that's going to be divvied out and evened up. Um, depending on who gets to the provincial finals. And after that, where are you finishing the league? So because Westmead won the Talchon Cup last year, they're guaranteed to be in the All-Ireland Series. Um, so that's one place already gone. So 
Division two teams are going to be in a bit of bother if they don't finish well. So it's a very important league. Those early games are going to be really important. And we'll be with you every Monday on the football pod to get stuck into it. Paddy, you were letting us know. Sorry, on. just on that. The two teams relegated from Division two will not play in the Sam McGuire. Yeah. That was the same as last year. They're out. It's tight. Yeah. So, Unless it's they tight. get to a provincial final. Unless they get to a provincial final, that is the caveat. Yes. Do not forget that. That's the asterisk in the mix with the GA fixtures. Are so, you putting the Royals in that bracket, Tommy? That's, I think they're right in that mix there. I think they could be. For relegation? Be, no. Yeah, but then. It's even mid table, you're in trouble. Right you know? Exactly. Look at anything can happen. They actually have. Um, a tricky actually start. Have, they actually have. Wait to uh, Cork. And I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. You have Cork as Rob at home in Division 2, anyway. Top three. That was top two last week. <laughs> if week on week, they're going to, by the end, they'll be relegated. Is that <laughs> we're, definitely be keeping, up three, no? we're definitely we're keeping slowly, a counter yeah. on Cork's results as the league go on. But yeah, Mead are going to be interesting. We might come back to that in a few minutes. Um, I've watched a few of their games in the Auburn Cup this year. Colin O'Rourke is definitely, I don't know what it's like doing it in January, but he's definitely put an emphasis on kicking the ball this year. So I might come back to you with a couple of questions around that. I don't know whether... Can you just kick the ball? Do you need to have a certain type of forward inside for it to stick? Uh, you know, a lot of Meads forwards are a little small, so I don't know whether he's going to pull a big man or two out of it um, and get them But you need there. to do it over time. So whatever kind of a forward you have, you learn his movements. He learns your kick passing and you build a relationship. Like it doesn't happen overnight. It is all about relationships on the field. And uh, it's lazy coaching when, when coaches just, Train to run the ball well, that as well. Launching is one thing, but just run the ball, keep it safe, don't turn over the ball. Like, you're never going to have a Clifford on a team like that, or a Conor Callahan, or a Gooch, or a Mannion. Do you know, they're not going to be on those teams because yeah. they're going to be left out because they're running the ball everywhere. Yeah, like well, it's just lazy coaching at times, and it's 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 infected some some teams, some areas. Like, I'm going to get in trouble now because I'm getting into mead very quickly here to start at the pod, but they are a relevant team in Division Two. O'Rourke was interviewed after their first Burn Cup game um, against Carlo. Ended up as a draw. Uh, he made a lot of changes, brought in a lot of new players. We mentioned in Season 2 the regional tournaments that were brought into Mead this year and a couple of players oh, yeah. came to the fore. How did afterwards, they go? Afterward, uh, there was, I think they went down well. Afterwards, O'Rourke was asked about the tactic of kicking the ball in that night because Mead's defensive play was decent, but up front, some things didn't stick. One young forward stood up that day, Dimon Moriarty, and he kicked four points. Very impressive. We'll see what we, we get out of him this year. But O'Rourke was at, were asked afterwards, was there an emphasis on kicking the ball? And he said, absolutely there was, but we're not reinventing the wheel here. Kerry, Dublin, Galway all kicked the ball a lot, and they are the most successful teams. It's something we're going to be working on this year. So it looks but like teams, be teams as well, Tommy, change. think that kicking the ball means... As Paddy says, putting your foot through it and driving it. Like, what does it mean? A 25 meter kick pass is nearly the most dangerous pass you can give to an attacker because he's definitely going to catch it. <laughs> That's the, probably the most important thing. It's probably at the right angle. His man doesn't know whether to dive in and put his hand in to stop you catching it or to, to shadow you. And you're close enough away to get a return or have someone else off the shoulder. So it, it, it's not, it sounds very simplistic that we're just going to kick the ball in and people say, oh, why don't you just kick it? You transition the ball up the pitch quickly. That All of that type of stuff that Jimmy's talking about comes into it. It's where are you kicking the ball from? Do you want to get it to the half backs? Are they trying to get a 40 yard kick pass to your half forward line? Are you playing three in the half forward line? Usually wing forwards are coming back. So are you leaving the centre forward in or on the 40 or bringing one of your full forward line out? It's the whole structure of your attacking game allows you to kick the ball. Now, we had this, if you remember last year, when Dublin had an absolute howler of a start to the National League. They lost their first four four games, five games. They, I remember saying, they're so slow. Four, in yeah. Attack. Four. They cannot get the ball up the pitch. They're not kicking the ball. And it's not like the lads are saying, oh, we're just not kicking the ball for no reason. There was, the structure up front wasn't right. There wasn't the right movement. There wasn't the right positioning from guys. There was loads of young guys getting game time and stuff like that. And that's what Mead are going to have as well. O'Rourke is trying to find players. So the team is probably going to change a lot. Mm. So those relationships can't be built up. And then all of a sudden you see Dublin 
as they get into the summer and more familiar familiarity is back in their game, there's more cohesion, then they can move the ball really quick. Mm-hmm. So it's not just a case of we're going to kick the ball and we just launch it from everywhere. It's cohesion across the whole team. Because it's If your cornerback gets it, your halfback gets it, what, are they trying to kick the ball or are they trying to carry the ball, like say for a Mayo or some of the Northern teams where they're just more comfortable running it like Derry? Or do we say, this is how we're going to play. This is the structure. These are the partnerships that Jimmy's talking about that if I'm at number 11 and I get it, I know where my 13 and 15 are. It allows me to kick the ball. That takes time to come in. So it's good that O'Rourke, and I'm not surprised by this, he is mm-hmm. a traditionalist, that that's what me are going to work on. But that is going to take time to implement because they have to find players as well. If it was a really settled team and they're going to go into this, it would be a lot quicker for that to happen. But me, me are trying to figure out two or three different things at the same time. And that's just, that's the nature of probably 10 years of not having any real plan or success. Well, plan, I don't know, but it's six years of being probably playing a similar way with Andy McEntee, who probably six. targeted a way of playing and brought in Colin Natty and, and tried to play a certain style and went with that for a couple of years. So changing that brings me on to a question I would have had. And it's a very good point, Paddy, what you're saying there that there's a number of things at play here. We mentioned last week that there are 14 counties with a new manager this season, yeah. nine of whom, and I'm counting John Cleary in here, are first-time inter-county managers. John Cleary obviously stepped in last year when Keith Ricken um, was ill and had to step aside. So as Cork boss, so Cleary's getting a, a full first year this year as, as an inter-county boss. Desi Dolan's over in Westmead. Uh, Ray Dempsey's taken over in Limerick. Colin O'Rourke in Mead. Connor Laverty, who's just 36, taken over at Down. Bushy McConville. In Wicklow, John Hegarty in Wexford, Paddy Christie in Longford, and Vinnie Corey in Monaghan are all first time managers. James O'Donoghue, how long should it take a manager to put their stamp on things when they take over a new team? Well, you can split that into two, really. Like you have to give a manager time, first of all, because you don't know how fast the players are gonna are gonna pick up if you've completely changed the style of play. Right. Like, or like- but Graham Potter needs to be sacked. <laughs> Not too much time, so Actually, a little bit of time. Sooner, he could be, the longer he stays, the better. He could be gone. Harry Potter. So, keep going, gone. so. Gotta go. But <laughs> say if you're completely overhauling a system of play, it, it really does take, it takes time to get fellas who have been used to maybe, just for example, say you're playing more of a possession game and low turnovers, you're running the ball, your head is kind of always down because you're taking a lot of hits and slipping it through the hand. Whereas to change that, to look up over people and through the lines, like that takes time and confidence to actually put into people. So that sort of stuff can take time. But the main thing for a manager, in my opinion, is when they go in to change like the culture that's in there to get everyone going in the same direction, make sure you're on the same page, create an atmosphere where you're, where you're seriously going at it and there's excitement. As far as I'm concerned, that takes no time. Ten Hag. That's a, that's a week to like, to, to change, to change things in the dressing room that, that will just put you so is far it, forward. Is it, is it that fast? Does it happen like that? That quickly? A week? You tap into someone's head. It can honestly be a training session. Well, but you know, I, I, that's you need to have play, the, the players are unbelievably important this as well, stating the obvious. If you have a relatively settled group of players who know each other well, and you're a new coach coming in, and I'm thinking someone like McStay, in, mm-hmm. uh, where they're a really experienced team, the players know each other, Paddy Carr with, with Donny Gall, they've had a lot of the same personnel there. It's I would feel it's easier to implement change in that because your main resource, the players, are well established. They know each other. If you're in a situation like what O'Rourke is in with Mead, what maybe Laverty is in with Down, where, okay, I'm trying to change the culture, I'm trying to change the style of play, but I'm also trying to find players who don't really know each other as well. Yeah, That will take longer. That's just inevitable. That's just mm. the nature of it. That's what's been impressive so far, you would say, from the little bit we've seen through the McKenna Cup of Down, yeah. where we had a bit of a laugh. Yeah, tug in cheek last year. It was a bit of a basket case. I don't think McCartan really wanted to be there himself. He was kind of landed with it as one of their best players. It just it seemed from the outside and anything you were hearing a really bad atmosphere. So for Laverty to go in and try and turn that around really quickly, that is impressive so far. But we'll see how they go in Division Three. 
they're in the most competitive province in terms of championship. Um, but I, I feel if you have at least the raw material of players, like in those Mayo and Donegal examples, and Manon to an extent with Vinnie Curry, it's probably easier and quicker to change things. But if you're coming in, in in the lower divisions where you're trying to change everything, that can take time. And in some cases, it just doesn't work. We've seen that. That's why the, the turnover you feel in coaches, particularly in, in the lower divisions, is so high. Yeah, I agree. But with, with the Laverty one, Paddy and Tommy, right? He would have gone in and it would have been almost there on the ground. Do you know what I mean? The only way is up, really. Literally, the only way probably is up. But at the same time, a couple of his big ideas could stir something in them. And next thing, he gets them going and he gets the group together. Like sometimes that can be the biggest change. You can talk about tactics and what we'll do on a kick out and all this stuff. That's probably the, the second or third stage. Like just getting the group going in the right direction and have something to actually believe in is probably the most important. It looks like Laverty's actually done that already, which is the impressive thing. I would say every, every start, this is our third season of this show, and every time this time of year we're talking about momentum, and mm-hmm. teams that have it, it carries you so far. Mm-hmm. If you look, and the beginning, what he did with Antrim, the first couple of seasons, Mickey Hart, but Loud, back-to-back brochures, they're up in Division 2 now. Offaly had it, kind of stalled a little bit, but Liam Kearns is back in there now. Can they stay in Division 2? Getting an easy wins at the start, and for a team like Down, who've just been on the floor really for a couple of years, Laverty can get a tune out of them pretty quickly. I, I look at we touched on last week's show about Leash. Traditionally, you wouldn't have them as a Division Four team. Billy Sheehan's there. Can he get something like say? There's been a turnover, some players. There's mm-hmm. younger players coming through to Port Arthur than guys. You would look and say if Leash can start getting the most out of their resources they should be out of vision four but that's the that's the challenge and the responsibility of managers that's why it's such high pressure it takes so much time and sacrifice and effort but if you get it right you can turn it around pretty quickly but that's the the million dollar question that's the challenge yeah i sort of added this last week um it's a bit after the fact but i'm gonna say it now down are my team to watch in 2023 they are playing Donegal in the Ulster Championship on the 24th of April. Keep an eye on that game. Now, it all depends. Where's that at? I think it's a home game for Down. I'm going to have to double check that. Well, well, to give us a bit, we said this last week, a bit of context. What what, what are you expecting from Down? Because you all say it. people are interested to watch. But what, what do you think of Down are going to do? Are they going to get out of Division 3? I'm expecting Down to get out of Division 3 this year. I think... If you, if you look at where Down was at, you mentioned James McCartan potentially didn't really want to be there. The players all fell apart. You know, it was, yes. it was a little bit chaotic last year. Paddy Talley had left in 2021. And the, the Paddy Talley days, they were very topsy-turvy. The COVID years happened halfway through. They kind of they stopped any momentum he had. And it feels like, and at the same time as Talley was doing this, Kilku were winning the Club Hall Ireland and getting to where they got to. And it just feels like that it the, the two just didn't meet. What Paddy Talley was trying to do, what the Kilku boys were doing. We saw some of the comments afterwards that blew up that, you know, things weren't all very rosy. If Conor Laverty can just pull it all together and make it all gel a little bit, if he can bring a little bit of that Kilku bite and that that spirit that they've had. Are they? the Kilku boys all at, on board? I don't know how many Kilku boys he has on board yet. I don't know, but I think we'll see over the league. I imagine campaign. so. Well, You'd okay. imagine. I don't know for sure how many he has, but if that can all come together, and as we said last week, if Donegal have a stuff t- uh, tough start to life without Michael Murphy, I think that's a game that could cause a bit of bother for them. A down team resurgent under Conor Laverty. Conor Laverty will make those boys believe they can do anything. You have down to get out of Vision 3, be in the All-Ireland Series, and to beat Donegal in the Ulster Championship. All right. I, I, yeah. <laughs> That is about five times more of a long shot than my Cork one. And you Cork really wouldn't be all Ireland last, last week. All I said was Cork top three, Division two. He has done oh, no, winning no, no. Sam Maguire. You said, you said Cork were getting promoted from Division two. Don't start wrong back, Jimmy. Play the, <laughs> I, tape, uh, play the tape. I absolutely am saying that Down are going to be, you know, winning an Ulster title this year. I just think that Donegal could be vulnerable and momentum, as we've said before, is a powerful thing in football. If Down can get through Division three, Build a bit of confidence. Donegal have a tough division one. That's where they're meeting. They're they're meeting going down the hill. And uh I think that it could be an interesting year. Thing with Donegal is right, a lot could actually depend on their first game against Kerry. I mm. they've actually 
Oh, Kerry are obviously an excellent team, but they've come off the other and they're missing a couple of boys who are playing with the club. They won't be full strength. They're probably not the fittest. So Donegal would back themselves to win that game. Is that, in, is that you never know with the momentum thing they could keep kick on? Is that in Tralee or where is it? Or is it up in Donegal? No, it's on the Bally Buffet. It's a great time for Donegal to get Kerry. Yeah. It is. It is. It's it's Week it's one. nearly it's nearly the best game they could have got. New manager, do you know, a team of champions come to town well. without yeah. the cliff. The cliff's yeah. not playing in that. Like no I Clifford, play, no party, no Paul Murphy, no Shane Ryan, um, no Paul yeah. Ganey, no David Moran. Chance there, like they've thrown a Monaghan the two games after that as well, both away. So it's uh, Monaghan, but over Clownus. It's going to be interesting to see how it all unfolds. But yeah, I just wanted to get into that with so many new managers this year, how long it should take. So it'll be interesting to see what we see over the early the early days. Um, As always, yeah. You know, Paddy O'Shea took over the Clare footballers in one of his last jobs and uh, they had a great start to life. They won a couple of games and it all just fell apart after that. So it, it can happen sometimes that you get a kick for a couple of games and then it just doesn't sustain itself or it just doesn't happen after that so, season though T that's that's the thing with the, the new structure mm. it's not you're not you don't need to keep the show on the road for nine months it's very like, true Dave said this it's week on week on week yeah um, the whole season if you go all the way to the all Ireland, is only six and a half months so yeah, it's not it's mad you're knocking three months off a traditional season like back in the day um so that's why the, the league is even more important obviously it's linked to literally linked to where you're, what championship you're going to play in which puts even more emphasis on it. But we said it last year, normally teams would take the league a lot lighter. Uh, I know with our Dublin team, we would have done this a lot that we basically do our pre-season after the league, coming into Leinster Championship, do that through the four or five week block that you get in April and May. That's gone now. It's Can't the Leinster it League and you're straight into the Championship. So we said it with Tyrone last year, they didn't have time to get it back. Even though they were late back, they never had an opportunity. It just wasn't a window to get up and running again. So, Paddy, can I ask you? Can I ask yeah. you on that? Um, and you're saying that previously you would have done that preseason block. Then is that why we're still seeing Dublin play? You know, a third string team in the O'Byrne Cup is that they're going through their preseason right now in January and they're not playing those games? Yeah, I think they have to. Yeah, you have to adapt to. You know, and this is where the sports scientists come in, and you're your strength and conditioning coaches and all that stuff. There, there's a window there. Like, where do we need to be at? The all Ireland final is the third week of July. So let's work back from that. You're knocking off two, three months of the season normally. So everything is condensed. So the days of easing yourself into a season, which we would have done a lot with Dublin, you just can't do that anymore. So, okay, the, the first string Dublin team is not playing in these over cup games, but those boys are working unbelievably hard to be ready for the National League mm. Dublin Dublin can't be in Division 2 that's they need to, to they need to put out a statement they've got a couple of players back obviously as well as, as losing Johnny Cooper but Dublin I've always going to use their Brown Cup can we find two or three players and that's the same did anyone really put their hand up I, I don't think so but yeah. there'll be a couple of guys who will get opportunities in Division 2 but it's, make no bones about it Dublin will have to hit the ground running because the season's just so short. Yeah. It's a little surprising maybe other counties haven't treated their preseason tournaments like that. Obviously, Kerry have mixed it up. Mayo have mixed it up. Maybe eight or nine first team players playing. They haven't, you know, changed around completely. Rory Gallagher was given out that there's unlimited subs in the McKenna Cup. So I know that, you know, uh, the other preseason tournaments we've seen cancellations. There's four or five thousand people turning up to the McKenna Cup. And I actually saw Kieran McGinney getting a bit of stick when he made eleven substitutions against Cavan and Armagh lost. He made eleven substitutions at half time and the Armagh fans weren't too happy. They felt that kind of ruined the momentum. But that is how they're using these preseason tournaments. But that, that is, is that is how it should be used. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what they're for. Mm. But it, it's 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 actually you see, that's why it's dangerous sometimes, even with a lot of new managers in the in division one this year. The, the press kind of get on top of every result and they kind of put pressure on you. So it's like you almost have to win all the time, even though these games mean absolutely nothing. Everything is so analyzed that you feel like you have to knock out every every result out of the park, which which isn't the case. But for those for those preseason competitions, I got a chance with Kerry in that, right? And I'll tell you why it was good. It was because I was playing with great players who weren't fit, right? And a couple of us young lads were flying fit. 
Yeah. And we it, it nearly not brought us up to that level, but it, it didn't seem as fair. It didn't mean? Yeah. So it's an equalizer. We, yeah, you almost got you almost kind of settled a bit. You got, you know, I'm not bad. I, I I might be able to tip away here, even though the lads couldn't move and you were <laughs> flying around the place. But mentally, it was actually a nice settling in period. And that Whereas, was 20. That was 2010, wasn't it? So lads were allowed to do a bit of wintering, weren't they? Yeah, but there was a good bit of wintering. Yeah, I so, remember <laughs> our, our last ever, the last ever time we played our so-called first team in the World Cup, we played Longford. I think it was 16. You were beaten, weren't you? In Pierce Park, and we had a pretty good team. Out, like McCarthy was playing a lot of the team that had won the All Ireland the year before, and we were absolutely hopped off by Longford. <laughs> they battered us, and we were an absolute shambles. Like <laughs> lads, we couldn't solo the ball. Like James McCarthy, this, we laugh about this. James McCarthy should have kicked a ball to me down the sideline, and he, he actually missed the ball. It was a fresh air. <laughs> I swear to God, like this, like Macker, and right in front of the dugout in Pierce Park, it was a horrible day. And, and Jim was standing there and he's raging because we're being beaten by Longford. And, and Macker, about a yard away from has a fresh air on the ball. And we were coming back on the bus after. And it was the last time we ever put the team out in the World Cup. He was so just like... Executive was, decision. He was like, you're a disgrace. Just, these are a shambles. Um, and he didn't say it at the time, but we never played in, in that again. Wow. That was like, that was... <laughs> we were the all Ireland champions. We had a pretty good, I'd say we had eight or nine guys playing in that team. You checked the team sheet. And uh, we were, we just weren't ready to play. Yeah. We, yeah. We've been, on. We've yeah. been celebrating and we came back and we just weren't in the right space for that. Yeah. And decided it's better off just training like demons in a, a, and building you up because we had the luxury of doing that. Mm-hmm. That season, we played Mayo in the All Ireland final in a replay, I think it was in October, yeah. 10 months later. So there was that luxury. That's not there anymore. But I'll never forget that James McCarthy, one of the best players of all time, having a fresh air trying to kick the ball. I don't think he was being tackled. I don't know what happened. It's like, and that summed up the O'Brien Cup. For the, us beauty, the beauty of the O'Brien Cup. Yeah. No, I think that's all fair, lads. Um, we better get into it. This is episode two of the Football Pod with Paddy Anders and James O'Donoghue. The Football Pod is brought to you every week by AIB, proud sponsors of the GA Senior Football Championship. Check out the toughest for more. We're going to be back right after this talking about the players to watch in 2023 and having a look at Division 2 and Division 3 of the National Football League. Chat to you in a minute. All right, you're very welcome back to episode 2 of the Football Pod with Paddy Andrews and James O'Donoghue. Lads, I want to hear your players to watch in 2023. We're big enough all the divisions this year we're bigging up the championship that is going to be exciting who are the players that are going to take a hold of it this year and uh, stand up and be counted make us excited who are they Paddy give me hey, one I, I went first last week Jimmy. okay James O'Donoghue you've done Fair all your lot. research Jimmy all over winter come on I call, did put call. in some hair graph. <laughs> this for me right I think you have to have a fellow who's going to start in National League well go all the way through the year who's going to put the hand up Lead their okay. side, right? So, tell it to me. I've gone with Dara Canavan from Tyrone because okay. he's 22, right? There's been a lot of expected of him probably already, which is not unfair, but it's difficult when you're 20, 21 to carry a lot of responsibility or carry that burden. Obviously, who his father is as well, there's additional pressure, right? And his brother, 22, and his brother, yeah, who's, who's breathing down his neck probably for a jersey. He's 22. He's after being top scorer in the Tyrone County Championship. Uh, man the match in the final. So he has form already. He's also going to slot in there next to McShane, who seems to be coming back around, and McCurry, who's another top forward. So even if he's on top form, how are you as a defensive unit going to mark him when there's two or three other fellas just as good, if not better, in there with him? So I think that this is the year where he takes on the responsibility and breathes a bit of life into Tyrone because, as we said last week, they've, they're going to have to have had a meeting and said, lads, are we, do, are we either shit or get off the pot, basically. And I think that one of those younger fellas is going to put up their hand and do it, and I fancy Derek Hanovan. Well, isn't the thing with him, and I, I think he's, he, he had a brilliant impact, and he was an impact player when he won the All-Ireland 21. There's no doubt in his talent. You get the sense, do they, I'm not sure... 
they seem to fancy him that much. I'm not, I'm not sure they trust him fully yet. He's yeah. kind of, will we bring him on? Is he better coming on? Do we get more out of him for 20 minutes? I, I agree. I think there comes a point for a player and he is around that age now where he puts a stamp on it's like, the coach has to play me from the start. Mm-hmm. I, you need to base this attack around me. And if you're looking at Tyrone, they're, the stalwarts they've had of Peter Hart and Matty Donnelly are older. That's the reality of it. They've had brilliant careers, but they need someone, they need energy into that team, into the forward line. And I agree. I think he's a, a perfect type of player for what they need. If you look and they can get McCurry and McShane, McCurry was probably one of the few players that still came out with a bit of credit last year. Um, McShane never seemed right to me. But he's had a whole. He looks sharper now, yeah. Had a whole. He's had a basically a year to get back now uh, after his injuries. If those two guys are humming inside, I think Canham is a perfect foil out around the top of the day, out around the forty to get the ball into them and take some of that burden, responsibility that's been just on Peter Hart and Maddie Donnelly for mm. a decade. I think Tyrone need that, but I to date haven't got the sense. And look, he's only young. He's twenty two. Like that is young. I haven't got the sense that they fully trusted him yet, Logan and okay. Dewar. I think it's a big year for them. I, I, I think there's there will be an opportunity for it to do that. There's been a lot of turnover in that Toronto team, and they're crying out for it. I said it last week. I think they'll have a good season. I think that it's a big season for him personally as well. I agree, but I, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's the situation that they have at the moment is why I think he has the chance to yeah. go. Because when they won the All-Ireland, he wasn't quite in the starting six. Then they were stuck in limbo the second year. Do we stick with what we have or do we kind of leave the new yeah. fellas at it? No, it's like blank canvas. Who Who's putting the hand up here now and going for it? Yeah. So I think I think that if his mentality is right, which I know, though, I, I'm certain it is, I think that he can put the hand up and just be awesome because he can play 11 and he can play 15. Do you know what I mean? It's the spot for him, isn't it? With the two boys behind him. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he can probably play out a bit. Yeah. Um, but Silky on the ball, I I take I, I take goal. McCary, put it that way. I for goal. he goes for goal yeah. as well, which is a there's a bit of a dynamite dynamism in him there. You know, he he his type of footballer, a little bit like Khan. He always has goal on his mind. I think when he gets the ball as well. Yeah, yeah he so looks a bit the, bigger as well. Like, he was very light, you know, in 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 21, even in in 22. So there's probably a bit of bit of bit of physical work that's going to come and natural physicality is going to come as well probably change again that, yeah well, his dad always had that didn't he the unbelievable ability to just hit the ground and roll and and turn defenders and and yeah. fight so size never made a difference to the canavans paddy before you give me yours just going to let you know that as good as your county shouts were last year your players to watch they, they made sense last year oh <laughs> predictions what what players we said to watch last oh yeah so i said paddy Killian McDade. You did you you were oh you nearly said Killian McDade. Paddy went for Maddie Tierney, who had a good oh. year by all accounts, but just you know, didn't explode onto the scene, didn't take control of games the way that you may have expected him to after his break at during 21. Well he scored, didn't he score a winning penalty against our man? I did he had a really he good year. No, 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 he, he did. He, he was he, he was, was really on his breakout year. year. Yeah, he had a good this year. could be his breakout year. And yeah. likewise, James, your pick, Ryan O'Donoghue just didn't happen for him with injuries. And I think it was a good shout in many ways. Uh, he was doing very well in the league, but it just didn't happen. So both players last year, in different ways, Cursed they were good shouts. No, they were good shouts. They're both very good players. Maybe they listened and maybe they were just held back a little bit by the pressure that the two you put on them. <laughs> I think that's it. I do. So, think the Paddy, yeah, correct. with that in mind, who are your players to watch in 2023? Players or player? We're going one player. Well, I have, a fe- I have a feeling you've two because you've WhatsApp me too. So who are your players? To watch? Okay. <laughs> ah, yes. Thank you for reminding me as I furiously scroll through my WhatsApp. Uh, I am excited to see Tommy Conroy at Mayo. Yes. I think everyone, not just Mayo, obviously Mayo supporters, but I think everyone was, it was a cruel blow for Mayo in particular, but for him. Yeah. Breakout year in 2021. All-star. An exciting player to watch. And... It was this time last year. Sigerson game, season gone. Yeah. Like, unbelievable blow to Mayo. They obviously go on and lose Ryan O'Donoghue who was well. They, it was just a bad disaster. Everything, everything that could have went wrong went wrong for them. I'm hoping he's well recovered. He would have got, obviously, 
the best of, of care to rehab the leg and get back in the mix. I think he'll have a massive role for Mayo this year. I, I would love to see, just purely just to see how this would work, if you got Ryan O'Donoghue, Killing O'Connor, back at his sharpest as he can be. I know he's a lot of miles on the clock, but if he can get back to somewhere near his best and Tommy Conroy inside. that Those three guys in the full forward line, playing off each other. Killian's an unbelievably smart player, so he can bring the other guys into it. That could be, that's what Mayo are going to need if they're going to have any say on this. <laughs> but I just think the way Conroy plays, he's buzzing around the place. He's all action. And I want to see, can he kick on from, from a brilliant year in 2021? He's lost the season, so I'm no sure. doubt he's mad for roads. So I'm excited to see him. And yeah. the other hey, before player... you go on, before you go on, Petty, first of all, he has an all star, so you're cheating there straight away. But wait till you hear oh, well, the second one. Se- <laughs> se- secondly, David Clifford. <laughs> <laughs> I would have, I agree, Tommy Conroy. Oh, so, so you're you're to agree. no, I agree, he's a super player, but uh, you know, McShane found it difficult the, the year after the cruciate, didn't he? Was McShane not like player of the year a couple of years ago? Are you are oh, you picking McShane? since the cruciate? Oh, no, McShane. no, that's what I'm saying. That's honestly, yeah. Like in That's what I'm saying. McShane did a cruise shit. You see, he did, you know, he took a year probably to get back to the sharpest. I wonder will that happen to, to Tommy Conroy? Conroy? I'm hoping not. Like, but... He's had he's had a year. So I'd say he, he probably played he probably played a couple of games already before going. It's usually kind of ten months. Nine months, yeah. Yeah, nine, ten months. So I so are you agreeing with me or not? Are you saying I'm just uh, pitching s- who's out? Super player, but for the sake of this challenge. You're picking what, an 18, 18 year old? No, no, just 20, not, 20 not, not, not a recognised player. Just You're yet. picking the son of God, James. You're not going that far, right? Paddy, <laughs> give us your second player well, to second watch. Player, is... player to watch. A player with a bit of potential to watch, to keep an eye out for. Tell the kids who to keep an eye out for. I think this young lad has a chance. Jack McCaffrey. <laughs> <laughs> the young lad is from Clontarf, right? Very fast. <laughs> Buzzy hair. Dubs are on the lookout for players. Genuinely, I... There's been a lot of talk in Dublin, obviously, about, about Jack and Manu coming back as a Dublin supporter. It is. It, it's brilliant to, to see these guys back. You did, I, I didn't think, from knowing the guys, I didn't think I'd ever see them playing with Dublin again. That's the honest to God truth. So it's it's brilliant that mentally they're, they're ready to, to give it another go and the challenge of it. I think Jack is fascinating because people are expecting that Jack is going to come back and he's going to be like the, when he was player of the year. That was eight years ago. Yeah, He hasn't played really in two and a half, three years. Mannion is a different kettle of fish because he's been playing at a really high level with Crokes. He had a couple of injuries, unfortunate. But, and in Boston. And Yeah, and he was in the States, whereas Jack really hasn't played at all. So it's a big ask. I'm just he's not tr- playing any club football, Perry. No, he had a, he had a total break from it. He was doing a lot of work overseas. So that's a big ask. Pe- people just assume that Jack is going to come back and he's going to be number seven for Dublin and he's going to be flying up and down the wing like he was when he was player of the year. I don't think that's realistic. I, I would hope. But it would be amazing if it was. And, and if he did get to that level, I would have Dublin as favourites to win the All-Ireland. I just don't. I think you need to manage expectations here. It's a big ass to be away from the game that long and come back and have that level of impact. He was one of our most important and impactful players. I think Dublin fans need to be patient with him. I think Jack understands this himself, that it, it'll take time to get up to that level. And you would be wary of a guy with his speed and have been away from the game of any sort of injuries coming back in. That if, mm-hmm. if he picks up a knock, We've said this for any of the key players in any of the big teams. You don't have time to recover <laughs> this season. Yeah. It's whether it's in the National League, but if you get one in the championship, you're you, gone. You're basically going to miss the whole thing. So I am hoping and praying. I love the fella. I hope he comes back and has the impact that we all want him to have in Dublin. And that I think he, he deserves. It's brilliant to see him back, but it's so interesting to see. Can he get to those levels? Mm. And I know this, I'm biased as a dog, but seeing Jack McCaffrey in Crow Park, full tilt, 
there's just an excitement around. There's not many players like that, even for neutral seeing it. It would be brilliant to see. I think Mannion is probably a bit more of a sure thing that he's going to come back and have a really positive impact. But for Jack, I, I can't wait to see him out there for Dublin. I can't wait to see him, but I hope it goes well for him. But it's people need to have ex, manage their expectations with these first couple of months through the National League with him. Sure. What, what year did, did, did they step away? Jack's gone since 20, the start of the COVID season. 2020. Started to, so oh. February 2020. And Mannion left January 21. After, yeah. Mannion was, kind of came off the bench in the COVID championship in 21 and then didn't play 20. again. Like the thing is, the thing is with the boys is they're not going back into the same dressing room or anything like the same dressing room. Do you know? So whatever they remember it have being like, it's not going to be like that, is oh, it? Do you know what I mean? It's going to be yeah. completely different and they're going to have to go in and just exert their influence straight away, straight away, be leaders. It's well, not an easy ask. Think, like, they're that's not... why I think it's even more important that they're going back. That there wouldn't have been any expectation and, and the guys were leaders in our, in our team that was successful, but there wasn't any expectation on it to be. If they didn't want to say anything, didn't have to. Mm-hmm. Whereas particularly now you look, like since they've, since they've left and gone back, like Cluxton and Johnny Cooper are gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, who no one else needs to say anything when you guys like that in the team. So that's why it's even more important that they're going back in because they have that experience. They're really, they're, you know, by looking at them, they're laid back characters. They're, they're people that you like being around, hanging around with. They'll have that influence on the team, but they, they know what it's about. These guys are elite some of the best players ever to play for Dublin. So that's that's a guarantee that they're going to go in and have that positive impact on it. But they, they know that, Jim. They know that it's not the same team. That's probably part of the reason of why they're going back to, yes. try, and, to try and get back to that. Um, would, would McCaffrey have been like, he's not playing football. Would he go training? Himself, <laughs> like what? What kind? Like what kind of an athlete is he? Obviously, he's naturally probably. blessed. And when he's in with, with Dublin, he's well, probably an insane. Trainer. He would. Just, he, um, just to jump in, we we had him on in 2020 on the Bernard Brogan podcast. I was producing at the time, and he was running a 10k in something like 40 something minutes at the time, like something outrageous, doing it around just in his own on a break from work. He, was, I think, he'd been sending Bernard his times then. So surely he was keeping himself, sure, relatively like, yeah. fit, Paddy. Not in the football sense. But taking over, yeah. Taking over. over. He's like um Gavin White down here. I see him running around the, the national park and honestly, he's like a deer. Oh, like I a deer. wouldn't have Jack like that. <laughs> no, not like Would he not be similar? No. Does he not? Is he not? No. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. Is he is he that like no? No, but but like I, I tell you, right? The decision for those guys to go back is not an easy decision. Because they they'd stepped away and it's they kind of made peace with being away from it. And it's t- for them to turn around and decide, okay, I'm going to go back now. That would have been a massive conversation. I'm sure they would have had with family, with friends, with guys on the team, with teammates, coaches. So when they decide that we're going to do this, we're going to go back, they're all in. Mm-hmm. So the training, when was this announced to This is back, what, October maybe? It was slipped in. It was a classic Dublin announcement. Yeah. It was like when Jim Gavin did that one where he's like, uh, Pat O'Coffee Coffee Burn is, is in the training panel. Yeah. Um, we've the Bascals training too. Yeah. And Jeremy Connolly's back. And we've, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but so. that's, that's what, four months ago now. So the boys, um, no doubt, are training away, getting themselves ready for it. So, yeah. That's, that's what you, you ask. Who are you excited to watch? What players are you going to watch? Yeah. I'm sure I'm not just, as a Dublin point of view, I'm sure a lot of people are excited to see where Dublin are at, but in particular, two of, for me, two of the best players of the last decade are back. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. And for you know, Dublin, really is. it's unbelievably exciting. Yeah, it really is really exciting. Great picks, lads. Now, Thank let's you. talk about Division 2 and Division 3. James, you, you're not convinced by Division 2. I think Division 2 is going to be brilliant. Maybe it's just because I have vested interests. I'm living in Clare and I'm a mead man. But I just think it's going to be really good. Genuinely doesn't think Derry are going to get promoted. He thinks it's going to be Cork and Dublin. And do you, like, do you not remember being here on the pod with Shane McGuigan two months ago? I, I can't. And they said, we're targeting Division 1 next year. He regrets it. Look, 
He's he regrets it. <laughs> About Division Two this year, I think that there's a bigger gulf between the best and the bottom. Agreed. So who are you putting in the bottom? I think it's a top four and a bottom four. Yeah. And right. I think there's there's a there's a line there. You got Go your on. in well, no particular top, order, you got Dublin Derry and a bottom five. Well, are well, you, you leaving out Cork in Cork? It's Dublin Derry, Cork, and Kildare. Are Why are Cork four? getting into the top? What have they done to get into the top four? <laughs> That's, I'm just from this part of the country. I know my football. <laughs> oh, just trust me on this. <laughs> you can clip this later in the year. Okay. And then your bottom four, your bottom four, no particular order, is going to be Claire probably be up mid table. Your load, Limerick, and your the Riles. Mead. You're an awful man. No, I'm not saying you, you said no particular I'm order. No particular order, but in this order. <laughs> Mead also attended. Rorke won't seven. be happy. Rorke won't be happy. No, I, I, th- I fancy them, yeah, to be maybe fifth or sixth. But I do think that Dublin are obviously going to walk it. Okay. Derry are going to be very strong. But as I said last week with the fixtures, if Cork had off to a good start and they are flying fit, I know that because we've seen them in the McGrath Cup. If they take that scalp against Kildare early, they can have a chance of that. being in the league final. Okay. I think I think there's a measure to the madness, yeah. Out of all four divisions, I am I think this is as clear cut for the two teams. I think Dublin and Derry are gonna be from out. Who's going down? Would you have said that Ross Common would have got out of one last year or two last year? Ross is in Galway. Ahead of ahead of Derry. Well, actually, I suppose I was the only person who knew about Derry on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't. We weren't far off. With our I think place. I said Derry too. I, I, I think, I think Limerick and Loud will go down. So the same teams that came up are going straight back down. It's not very. Limerick have lost. You think Limerick Derry Dublin? Billy Lee. Limerick have lost. Ray Dempsey's in. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It's hard to know what what's going to happen I, there. I I worry for Clare. As good as they have been, and the the Colin Collins. A brilliant story. Their win last year as well, getting into the quarterfinals. Okay, look, they, they, were, they were well beaten by, by Derry in the end. But losing someone like Tubbery as well. I just... You wonder do they have the same energy and the same buzz around them again. That's what I would say. I I think they, they could be in a bit of trouble. And to be honest, Tommy, I know I'm not overly certain on Mead. They were... I think that they needed a change. Obviously, O'Rourke has gone in as kind of a figurehead and the people around them. I get the rationale behind that, but you have to remember how poor they were last season. Mm. And have they got, with all the will in the world, and having a legend like O'Rourke in and all the good stuff around it and trying to get the, the clubs and the county and everyone, we, we spoke about this at length last year, of trying to get everyone at least pulling in the right direction. The bottom line is, have they unearthed the players to turn this around from a pretty low base? I haven't seen that yet. That is the big challenge. I know I would worry for Mead as well. On that, I would agree with you. I think Mead are in a precarious enough position at yeah. the start of the year, but it all, I think, hinges on those early league games. I think Mead yeah. need to have a good start. Yes, 100%. I would actually counter what you said about Clare without getting too much into it. I think there's going to be a bit of an energy about Clare. All right, that okay. Win, that okay. win that they had against Roscommon last year in Crow Park. Yes, Derry ripped them apart in that yep. quarterfinal. It was a bad day. But I think the buzz and the energy that it got from that late win, Keelan Sexton's free yeah, kick to put yeah, it out yeah. the comeback, I just think it gives them a bounce. And I think a couple of young players have been blooded in Clare over the last couple of years. Okay. They're gonna yeah. they're gonna take center stage this year. That UL team that got to the Sigerson final had two or three Clare lads on it who haven't really taken centre stage in, in senior intercounty football, but have the ability to do so. I think they me, can do quite well again. What's in it for Clare in Division 2? They're not going to get out of it. You're saying Cork are going up? Man. I, they're not going to be better than... Right, take Cork out of it. They're not going to get go up ahead of Derry or Dublin or Kildare. Right? No, they, they're not. Yeah, the, so the, the Derry it, defeat I just last mean, year I just went mean, against do you know, us. Do you know when you're saying everyone is on, on a journey and the same page... I just feel like they're going into the Division 2 campaign and... I didn't say that. You're putting words almost, in my mouth now. I said... Oh. 
But hold on, Jimmy. I wouldn't put words. I, I like don't what? think. I don't think that they they're going to get any excitement about Division Two. But but I, I'd counter that right. It's a very slippery slope. Like, like you may see it as nearly. Oh, it's nearly boring. Clare are in Division Two for a number of years. The same coach and stuff like that. You look at teams like Cavan, like Leash, where they are now. You get relegated out of that. You can go on a very slippery slope and find yourself very down true. the bottom tier. Very so true. to be fair to Clare, I think they've got close to getting promoted. They've got a couple close. of games or if they win the last game, they're going to be in Division 1. I, I do not think that's they're at that level. But what they're doing in sustaining Division 2 is, we talk about, I think they're, they're squeezing the orange as much as they can. But if you go in with an attitude going, I'm not really arsed about this league, and they you get relegated, just, to, you you get relegated to Division 3. But you're out of the All-Ireland. Division 4 the following year again. You're it's, out of the All-Ireland. Yeah. That's the thing. If you lose those games, you're out of the All-Ireland. Clare have Cork and Munster. Limerick are on the same side. I, I think Clare will be all right in Division 2. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm saying the same. I'm saying Clare are on the middle. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I think that's... But, I, I think Mead... I, I do agree. I think Mead... I'm hoping we'll see a kick. I'm hoping some of the younger players that are definitely very talented are going to stand up and... and Grab the year, but it's going to be a precarious league campaign if they don't get a good start. I could see made and made and Clare in fifth and sixth position, and I think Loud and Limerick will be okay. Well. Can we move on to Division Three? We didn't get to talk about the dubs enough, but we will talk about the dubs as the league. We'll have a long goes. season, plenty of time to talk. Very about. very long season. Division Three, lads. Um, a couple of very interesting teams in here. Antrim and the McEntee in charge up north said yeah. he wouldn't take another county job. And they got the job in Antrim. I think that'll be interesting. Keep an eye on that. Cavan are back after their year in Division 4. What are they going to do? We've got Fermanagh with Kieran Donnelly in charge again. Westmead, Talchin Cup champions with Desi Dolan and Jason yeah. Sherlock on his backroom team. Offaly and Liam Kearns in charge. Langford and Paddy Christie. It'll be interesting to see what stamp he can put on things. Obviously still coaching DCU as well. Tipperary in Division 3. And we've down... And Connor Laverty, who I've already Spike. cursed Spike. by talking up. So it's it's actually a very competitive division and it's gonna have a big impact because you get promoted, you're in the All Ireland series, yeah, they in division three, match. and you're in you're in for the Tatchin Cup, which as Westmead showed, you can get a lot from a taking the Tatchin Cup seriously. I think Westmead are gonna win this division. They're already guaranteed their place in the All Ireland. I think Westmead are gonna get out, but okay. it's the second place. Who else gets promoted? But for Laverty coming in and getting a bit of a kick, I wouldn't have had down near it. I still don't know. I know he's had positive signs so far. I at very early days though, it is. Exactly. I I kind of you would say Cavan potentially they were probably could have beaten Donegal in the Ulster Championship last year. They were fuming they lost that Talta Cup final. And they kind of had control of that game. But I have a sneaky feeling for Liam Kearns and Offley. That they might nick really, it. yeah. Do you I, know, like, can I you? Think, I think they've cast I think your mind back. Show. I think they've got a show. They were in two, so like, it, it's they're easy. Down, they, they're down a level. They were in two, but there was a goal flats that, and I know they got a couple of great goals that day, and a couple we're of doing the the classic on paper. Duddy Gall wouldn't be all early. You say Westmead and Cavan are probably just the okay. strongest teams, but I just to spice it up, I think awfully have a chance. Okay. But I think yeah. Westmead are nailed on the community. James, what are you seeing from the vision trick? I wouldn't have Paddy's optimism for Offaly. You had it last year. I did. Uh, no, I said <laughs> Offaly for Leinster last They year. were off the back of winning the under twenties. And True. I said yeah. team to watch. Yeah. Team to watch, exciting team. If they put in all the twenties, they'd be good to watch. Uh, and then yeah. I said, but my team to watch is Derry. Mm-hmm. I want that. That's true. And like, so, and clip, what, what I will say uh, is, Westmeath are far and away favourites for that for that league. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Far and away because they've already got the the winning mentality of the of the Telton. The holiday. If they can go on and win Division Three, right? That is back to back trophies. They'll be going into a Leinster Championship, which Canellan told us last year they fancy. Not to win it, but you know they fancy to be the well, second best team well, in that. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they fancy to win players. it? Why They've wouldn't really they? good players? Because wouldn't West Mead, want to win it. Don't why wouldn't Westmead? Me. But listen to this, right? Uh, Kildare, Wicklow, Carlow, Dublin, Wexford, Leash are on one side, and the other side of the draw: Mead, Longford, Offaly, Westmead, Loud. 
Yeah, well, Westmead will be in the in the Leinster final. Then. You said I, it. I would say. Yeah. And if you're going into a Leinster final, having won a Talchin Cup in Crow Park, having won a Division Three League title in Crow Park, playing a team coming from Division Two, you're giving yourself a chance. Oh, it's a long shot. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Who's getting relegated? Who's yeah, getting relegated? Me there's a chance. <laughs> Who's getting relegated from Division Three? Fucking Jim Carrey there. More like a million to one. <laughs> telling me there's a chance. <laughs> Sam tonight. <laughs> um, well, to go, up, relegated. To, go, to go up with Westmead is going to be a tricky one. It's, it's very hard to call who's going to go up with him. I don't see Kevin going up. No, no one's no one's up. buying my down shot. No, early days, early days, early days. Yeah, there's no, there's no Bear mind how bad they were. Yes, they're just... probably improving with Laverty, but they were again, they're coming mm. from fucking low base. There. But down are better than Division Three, and they have pedigree. And if they get the Kilku boys back. Down are better in Division 3. All right. Do you I mean think. heritage wise? Heritage. And even I would say with the Kilku lads, they're going to be they're going to be right up there. But Who's going down from Division 3, Jimmy? Who's going to struggle? Oh, he's, he's, it's hard. It's hard. It's his research. I couldn't, I couldn't back anyone. I couldn't, <laughs> he's not I couldn't back team. anyone to go down there. I, know, I think I think Tipperary have slid a little bit. Yeah, and I think they're in danger of becoming. There's always a, bit of a result in tip, though. They'll always. I, I understand that, and I know they have, you know, quality footballers there across the board. I just know there was talk that Conor Reardon was going to commit for the year. He was training with them for a few weeks, and he's not going to be playing. It's definitely in the early part of the year. He would have made a massive difference to that team. Um, I think Tip could be in a bit of bother. I'm going to counter your Offaly argument, Paddy. I watched Offaly a few times last year. You think they're going I, down? I know. I just think it's going to be a really, really tight division. And I think Tip. Longford, Offaly, Fermanagh, if there's a tier, I think they're they're all in a little bit of danger. It was such a close division last year. There was literally, fair. there was, I think, points difference that kept Longford no, no, no. up and leashed down last year. So it's going to be so, so tight. I'm, I'm tipping Antrim and Fermanagh to go down. To go down, okay. Antrim, new management, they could get a bounce. Get I, watched, I watched Antrim against Cavan in the Ulster Championship last year and it was that good. I remember, I remember your WhatsApps. <laughs> you know that you have to come out with this live now on the GA goal, like whatever it is. <laughs> <you have. laughs> oh, you're going to get a slap on the wrist from Larry McCarthy. <laughs> uh, lads, you're going to lose me that gig before you start. <laughs> okay. All right. Lads, uh, this is episode two of the Football Pod. Okay. I think we're going to leave our, our division predictions with that. Obviously, all long shots. Okay, thanks. I don't know if it was a Jim Carrey kind of person you threw at me there. Uh, we're going to end this week's pod with a little bit of Jeopardy. Oh. We're going to try and track our predictions for, I think we should just do Division 1 so we can keep a bit of credibility. Okay. If you want to go Division 2 too, James, you were definitely keen to do so. I just, I'm afraid to back against Mead every week. I, I mightn't be allowed back into the county. It's um, an exciting weekend. First weekend in the National Leagues. Yeah, yeah. let's go for it. Right. Bye. We're going to go around the houses. Paddy, James, Tommy. Paddy, where's Common Throne? Throne. James. Throne. Throne. Mayo, go away. Where's that on? Mayo. Oh, first game for mixed day. Oh, that's tight. <laughs> that is so tight, actually. Enough. Like, I'm giving it the bigger one last week. God, we're the best <laughs> team in Connacht. And I think they are, but I think this game, open night in the league, McStay. And Galway turned them over in the championship in yeah, the first game of McHale Park. That, like, that is Castlebar. Uh, One to... second, before you make your call, Castlebar under lights. Does that make a difference? Yeah, it's horrendous over there. Like. It's on, it's on uh I think TV. to win yeah. that yeah. game, oh, I've got to... Mayo. I think Mayo might win that. Is that a Saturday night game? So Saturday night, yeah. Oh, that's, that's the game. opening game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Mayo. I think Galway are the best team in Connacht, but I just think the situation on that game, first match in McStay. Big call. Bet them in the FPD League. Yeah. Okay, James. You went for Mayo? You went for Mayo, yeah. Home win. Yeah. I'm going to 
go. I'm going to. Will Shane Walsh be getting a break? More than likely. Yes, Shane Walsh. You'd imagine, Shane you'd Walsh imagine there has to be a little bit of a break factored in there. You have to be all hurt and fine. You know, there's, there's, the there's a bit thing. of a break, right? Go on. Yeah. Without Shane Walsh, I, I, I think that Mayo will win at home. First game, they'll get a bounce off mixed day. Yeah. Okay. I'm back in Galway. Um, oh, without Walsh. Okay. Yeah. I think Galway are uh, setting down a marker for the year. Okay. Monaghan or Armagh? It's in Castle Blaney. Armagh. Yeah, I can't. Armagh. Yeah, I think Armagh as well. And Donegal Kerry. Paddy, you're that first. That is a toughie. Paddy's first. Don't want to lead the witness here. We said we're never back in Donegal. <laughs> <laughs> we literally said... Never. Oh, ever, they're stronger on paper without the Cliffords like, for Kerry. They're stronger on paper. Legal. But if there is one time to play Kerry, it's the first game in the National League without the Cliff in Bally Buffet. I'm literally contradicting everything I said last week. No, <laughs> I'm going Ker- Kerry. <laughs> oh. You're going Kerry? No, oh, Donegal. Right. Donegal, he's done it. He's done it. I, I, I cursed, Donegal, I did not bring myself to back Donegal. You cursed the people of Donegal again. Go on, you I, can't, I, can't, I can't back Donegal after just what Kerry, what they're doing. Yeah, and trust me, Kerry, you're not going to be strong. That's no Clifford, no Paddy, no David, no Paul Murphy, no Paul Ganey, no, no David Moore, no Shane Ryan, plus one or two Knox and Niggles. But I'm not back in Donegal. I'm going. That, that out of pride, that doesn't make. Okay. Anyways, I'm back in Kerry because I don't just think Jack O'Connor comes back so, after so winning the Ireland. predicted in week one. Game. We've just gone the exact opposite in week two. Of our I, think own predictions. I think it's dangerous to uh, predictions to are too. fast. We, we end up looking yeah. stupid here, Tommy. I yeah, think yeah it's but you see, predictions doesn't actually have too much of an indication how the rest of the year is going to go because yeah. first round is is like exactly. There's a lot of caveats. In context and where we are in the season. Yeah. Do I think Donegal are going to have a better season overall than Kerry? Not in a million years. Yeah. And the same with, on the Galway Mayo side. Just the circumstances around this game. Galway missing, for me, their best player. And Mayo, Castlebar, first night, McStay. That's why I'm back in those two. But I, I would say Galway and Kerry will have better seasons than what okay. uh, Donegal right. and Mayo. That, that Kerry-Donegal game will be very interesting because if you've that many missing for Kerry... Yeah, it's there's a big will. chance for fellas to step up and play. Penny, and yeah. Isn't that Jimmy? Look, if you were going up there and you're getting a, a goal for Kerry, that's a hard game to stand out in. Like Donegal away in horrendous conditions, no doubt. <laughs> and you're up against it. It's usually it? nice up there. No, no. It's summertime, it's still hard going up there. If you're going up there end of January and you're trying to put a stamp. Imagine you're a corner forward playing that game and you're trying to put a stamp on things. 35 mile an hour wind against you. Like, like, oh my, yeah, it's it's tricky. Hey, you've nailed Look, it. Well, it depends the on the weather. I think there's, I think there's a good reason behind it. Very quickly, Division Two. We're going to do these this yeah. week, and we're wrapping up the pod. Then we'll have a side bet first of all, Tom, and me then Cork. Well, well, I'm straight away. It's tenor, Colum- Cork, and you're saying is that a or Mead? No, it's in Cork. Cork are winning that. Cork and Mead have a great tradition going back to yeah, the yeah. 80s and the 90s. I know that. I know that. So we, we'll say a 10 or so, Tom. No problem. All right. Yeah. We Fair should have one game a week. No revolution. I think I want to see hard cash swap hands on the podcast. I, I want to cash. Euro coins. Are we revolute could go. Okay. All right. Fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Dublin Kildare. You have to. No, sure. AIB has to be through AIB. Okay. I'll AIB. I was of the football pod. <laughs> that, is, that is very uh, true, James. Good work. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You'll have to clip that out, will we? No, it's fine. Keep going. Uh, Dubs and Kildare. Where is that on? It's in Croker. Oh, sorry. It's it's a home Dublin game. So is it in Parnell Park or is it in Croker? Park, I think, is it? Neutral. Neutral game, yeah. Uh, Dubs. Dubs. James. I don't think the Dubs will be flying at the start of the year either. Jimmy, get out. Get out. <laughs> Where's it? <laughs> you sounded like you were six points deep in Cassidy's. <laughs> get out. <laughs> where, is it, where is it actually on? It's, it must be in Croker. The dubs don't play anywhere else. 
Apart you know, from the third team playing in the Kildare Park. are in a bunker. You haven't heard a thing from Kildare. They're dangerous. I like this. Look at this. There's I'm, a, like, I'm going Kildare. Right. I'm, I'm going Dublin. Gary Limerick. Want to do a tenor bet with me as well, Jimmy? And Go on, do it. Go. <laughs> All right, tenor. Yes, lovely. Give me, give me two to one. Now, tenor on the nose. That's three coffees for me next week at work. Lovely. <laughs> three coffees. That's. I bought the. I know. Christina had it. The Dolce Gusto machine. Ooh, is, it not, is it good? <laughs> Very nice. Oh, Ooh. good evening, Dolce Gusto. <laughs> Yeah, Nescafe, Dolce. Nice. Gusto. <laughs> so I don't say I'm having that? a coffee. I say You're I'm having a Nescafe, Dolce, Gusto. <laughs> okay. You've got to come on every week and just advertise something else. It's the golden that's... nugget last week. That's the... Hashtag Nescafe for more. This is a new year and a new podcast. We're meant to be doing a little bit shorter this year, boys. So let's get through this. Okay. Derry Limerick. Oh, Derry. Derry. Derry, Derry, Derry. Claire and Loud. Where's that on? It's in Claire. St. Cusick Claire. Park. Claire. Jimmy's thinking. Mickey Hart is going to pull some out of bag. I think that Lode have been training incredibly hard. I'm going to go Lode. Jimmy's Jimmy sources or they're going to, yeah a hunch. They're going okay. for they're going for strong guy. league. He knows a guy. Loud, okay, and Cork and Mead. Cork. Okay, we'll take that, lads. It's been a pleasure, James. I'm not even going to ask you. I just know you have Cork because we have the bet on. So it's been a pleasure. Episode two of the Football Pod. Thanks, everyone, for uh, getting involved and getting in touch. Lads, we had one million listens to the Football Pod in season two. Oh, massive. You know, oh, That's just season two. Yeah. One million people were listening to us. And James, I, w- I won't tell you, you, you've been a massive addition, but a lot of questions were asked to me and Paddy when Andy left us. A lot of people said that we wouldn't be able to Survive without him. So you've been. Oh, a big you sound like Paddy Clifford here, name and names like Slayton. <laughs> and those those people said that was the brothers. end of it. Look at us. And man. now to liars. <laughs> <laughs> we will those see you next are. week after the league has commenced and we have a bit of hard data to go off and we'll put our predictions to the test. Paddy oh. Anders, James O'Donoghue, it's been a pleasure. Talk to you soon. No Cheers, folks. Good night.